Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at one of the different AI nodes available in NAN, which is the basic LLM chain. LLM stands for a large language model, and this can be something like a GPT-5 or a Sonnet 4.5. A lot of people get this confused with an AI agent, so in today's video, we'll be talking about when you wanna use an agent versus a basic LLM chain. We're also gonna jump through about six different examples in this video, so that way you get some practical use cases for it. Uh, before we do get started though, if you guys wanna join a community of other people that are interested in learning about AI and using these skills to either get freelance customers upskill at their current job or make their business a little bit more efficient, I have a free school community which is linked down below in the description. Super active in there and would love to have you as part of the group. Regardless, let's jump into this video and learn a little bit about basic LM chains. All right, let's jump into the basic LM chain. So essentially, how does this differ from an AI agent? Well, on the LLM chain side of things, we don't actually have access to a lot. You can see we have a model over here, but in comparison to an AI agent, so let me pull this up over here. Our AI agent has the chat model, which is what we have over here, but it also has memory as well as tool options. Whereas the basic LLM chain, and you'll see this throughout the video, like we don't have those options. Uh, you can see we have batch size and delay between batches. We can add in prompts over here. Um, we can define a prompt, et cetera, but we don't have access to tools in memory. And that's the difference really between an AI agent. AI agent has more options, whereas a basic LM chain is strictly, here's your model. Um, and you have a few other things you can change, but no access to tools, no access to memory. So again, both use an LM. Um, you want to use an agent if you need a, some sort of tool, agent if you need to use real-time information or personal data with RAG, agent if you want to have a conversation. Uh, Chain is literally just using an LLM only. And uh, yeah, so let's jump into it. So the first one that we want to do over here is take a look at a manual trigger. And what I'm going to do is just quickly delete that and go over here. Um, the other thing to show you, once I add in this manual trigger, where do you find the basic LM chain? So two different options. First, you can go over here and just search basic and you'll see basic LM chain. Or if you go into AI and what we wanna do is go down a little bit and you'll see basic LM chain, a simple chain to prompt a large language model. That's all you're doing. You're prompting a large language model and you can essentially change whatever model you want. Let me just show you. Uh, so you click over here and you have all these different options for language models. Now, typically for these videos, I just set up OpenAI because I feel most people have that, and that's literally my line I've said in other videos. Uh, super easy to do. You just set up your account over here, which all you need is an API key, and then choose the model. And I've just been using GPT-5 Mini for watching the future. Obviously, there's gonna be no more models that come out. Uh, this will probably be old at a certain point, but I'm just using 5 Mini. So. What we're doing also is we're defining our prompt down below over here. So you can see it says source for prompt. I'm just gonna say, what is the capital of Florida? And I'll unpin this and run it. I'm not gonna do that for everything just because of costs. And you'll see it goes into LM chain. It goes into our model over here, which we define. And then we have a result. The capital of Florida is Tallahassee, which is correct. So now another way that people use the LM chain, and I don't find it as helpful, but is using a chat trigger. So what we can do is set up a chat trigger over here and we can ask in specific questions. So how this differs is you go over here and you go over here and choose a connected chat trigger node. So it looks for an input field called chat input that is coming from a directly connected chat trigger. So what we're doing over there is that, and let's ask the question, how many miles is a 50 K? So we can open up this chat over here and actually I'm gonna unpin this and we'll jump into it. So I open this chat, go over here, how many miles is a 50K? And you see, again, it goes through over here. We just pass this in. But why this isn't great is there's no memory. So you can't actually have a conversation that goes back and forth. So if you only need to do this once, sure, but uh, there's no conversation that's being stored. So it's not really great in that regards. So if you wanna have some sort of conversation, use an AI agent that goes back and forth. However, this is one use case that you could technically use the basic LLM chain for. So jumping into this next one, I wanna showcase three um, different examples 
of prompts that you'll find in over here. And how you find this is if you go down over here, it says chat messages if using a chat model. Uh, first one, you have AI, then you have system, and then you have user over here. Typically, people use system and user. But let me explain the differences between all those. And by the way, I will have a video on system and user slash human uh, prompts here in the future. It's actually my backlog. But uh, let me hide this chat, go through it. So AI, you enter a simple a sample expected response in the message field. The model will try to respond the same way in its message. System, enter a system message and include what the user input to help guide the model and what to do. There's an option for things like defining tone. For example, always respond talking like a pirate. This is literally directly from the AN documentation, by the way. Uh, user, enter a sample user input using this with the AI option can help improve the output of the agent using both together provides a sample of input and expect a response to the AI message for the option or the model to follow. So this is just my opinion over here, but you just use the AI slash user in a system message. When using this, I sometimes see the answers for AI user in the results. So just to show you, uh, my example over here, I have, let me just go back over here. I have a, a band called Parkway Drive and what we're doing over here is getting a user message of vice grip. So I put in a song, gives me the result of the band. And my message over here is you're an, a music artist researcher. A user will enter in a song, you need to match the artist to it. This will often be a rock or metal band. That's what I listen to. Only I'll put the band associated with the band input, follow examples and user and AI section. So this time I'm gonna open this chat, I'm gonna reset it, and we're gonna test this out. So. Uh, I'm gonna put over here the police. Well, actually not the police. I'm gonna put over here uh, the song Message in a Bottle, in a bottle. And this will go through. And sometimes it, it populates um, Parkway Drive over here, but this time it put in the police. Okay. And uh, let's do another example over here. So let's put sweet child of mine. I don't know why I'm doing classic rock examples today, but that's fine. Uh, we'll put that over here. Let's see if it gets in roses. Yep, we have that over there. Um, let's think of another one. Englishman in New York. And you can see, actually, it, it messed up. It gave me Parkway Drive as well as Sting. So Sting's the correct answer. Um, but that's why I would just recommend that you put this in system message if you have some examples and things like that across the board. Uh, because sometimes this chain doesn't work properly for it. Um, so I showed you a bunch of examples of it working, but then also a hallucination just based off of how this is built. Okay, so our next one is requiring a specific output format. And what I'm going to do is just drag our um, thing over here for manual trigger. So I use this a lot when it comes to AI agents because one of the parts of orchestration is setting data from node to node, um, whether you wanna change where the data is stored at and then also send it to an AI agent to perform some sort of task. But I like using an output parser. And just to show you, there's a few different types of output parsers. I'm just gonna go over the structured output parser over here. Another video I do plan on making here in the future, but we have this over here and all I'm saying is convert the following distances as shown in the output parser. And I put marathon, only do miles and kilometers. So that's our prompt on this side of things. And then on the structured output parser, I give the example of 50K, 31 miles and 50 kilometers. So when I run this over here, you'll notice that we have uh, 26.2 miles and then 42.2 kilometers. So that's when we have this and you just require specific output format. You define how that looks. There's different ways that you could do that. You could do a JSON schema or a JSON example. I tend to use just JSON examples most of the time and uh, that's the output. So instead of letting your LM chain decide how it wants the output as you see uh, for example, over here, right, the capital is Tallahassee, or if we go over here, well, this one's not gone, or this one over here, 
uh, which technically gave us two different bands. This one over here, we had the structured output and it gave us the output as we specifically wanted it, miles and then also kilometers. Another thing that's pretty cool with the LM chain is you have an option to set a fallback model. So occasionally a model will fail, uh, so you can actually have a fallback just in case. So for example, you could set up OpenAI as well as Anthropic over here. So you could say, for example, you have GPT-5 and Sonnet 4.5, just in case it's super critical. Um, and that's kind of a, one of the benefits of fallback models. I actually might make a video on that as well here in the future. I'm trying to think of different uh, daily NAN videos, and I think that would be kind of helpful. Uh, next, what we're doing is talking about a sequential LLM chain. So this is when you're gonna go through AI agents and perform one task at a time, which is what I typically would recommend. Uh, you can use multiple tasks in here, but make sure they're somewhat related. What happens is sometimes people will cram like 10 or 15 tasks into one AI agent or one LM chain and there's confusions. So sometimes you wanna separate those out. So in this example, what I did is I actually use a structured output parser and let me show you what we have going on. So I put my prompt over here, who is considered the greatest marathon runner of all time? Think about longevity, accomplishments, and records broken. The output should just be a name. And then what we have over here is output. I put runner. Zach Bitter is a famous ultra marathoner. So we put him in over here, just like that. And you can see on this side of things, we have runner and we have Kipchoge, which is what I wanted to have the answer to be anyways, which is really nice. So again, we set up our researcher. It did some research. It said Kipchoge is the greatest marathoner of all time. I just gave the example over here. And then what I'm doing is I'm sending this data into our LM chain. So what I have over here is an expression. I said, based off the runner, I grabbed this, I pasted it over here. Can you write two to three sentences talking about his running career? And then we have this built out on here. So one LM chain does our research, looks up who's the greatest marathoner is. And then the second one over here does some research and talks about Kipchoge over here. Uh, first person run a sub two hour marathon, which is honestly incredible. I can't even think about that. I'm winded if I'm running six minute miles, but uh, there is that. So essentially just again, to kind of recap what is going on with the LM chain. So if all you wanna do is prompt a large language model and you don't care about tools, you don't care about memory, basic LM chain will get the job done for you. However, there is some things to notice so like sometimes when you go over here and you set up AI system and user, you're gonna get some errors. Personally, I wouldn't set all these up. I would just set this system over here. And then, um, you know, you're still gonna send a chat message over here or you're gonna define your prompt internally. So I find that usually works the best. I don't really use AI over here or that user. Um, you can know, you can define a user prompt technically in this side of things and you can see uh, not that example, but it's uh, right over here, right? User message. So I don't find that really practical, but I just wanted to cover that because it is a setting of this node. Uh, requiring a specific output format is really, really important, especially if there's other nodes that are coming afterwards and you want to have a, a specific result, as I showed you like what goes on down below over here. And you can also set up fallback models let me hide this chat. And that is the video. Hopefully you guys found some value in like when you want to use a basic LM chain. If you found it valuable, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're pushing out a ton of different NAN and AI content over here. A full playlist will over 50 NAN videos if you want to learn more a little bit about this software. And if you want to network with other people that are learning AI and want to make money with AI, well, we have a full uh, school community as well, which you can find down below in the description. So, uh, People in there want to either freelance, improve their skills for their specific job, or uh, become a little bit more efficient with their businesses. So we'd love to have you in that school community. Anyways, talk to you guys later.